I'm Madhavi Kakkar. I'm reporting to you from Group 1 News. I'm going to be talking about SAS Institute, which is one of the biggest data analytics solution company. I'm going to be interviewing Mr. James Goodnight for you today, live here at Group 1 News. We welcome Mr. James Goodnight, who is the CEO and co-founder of SAS Institute. Thank you for joining us here. My pleasure. So you witnessed the evolution of data. You've been around in the industry for the last 17 years. Can you describe the evolution and tell us what the future of data analytics is like? Well, 17 years, I feel it's quite a big number for me. So it was a big challenge for me coming to the industry of the data management. But now I've uh, seen a quite a evolution going around. Like people have a lot of uh, data that needs to be analyzed. And uh, the data has to be filtered and it has to be sorted out in some other way so that it can make it can be made simple to other people for to be understanding. And big data management is the place where other companies can pitch in their marketing skills and we can they can bring in a sales pitch. So there's a lot of evolution in these places. That's what I think. That's a brilliant thought, Mr. Goodnight. So, Mr. Goodnight, from its inception in 1976, SAS Institute has come a long way. You've become a big, big name in the world of data analytics and solutions. What is that one factor that differentiates you from your competitors in the industry? Well, um, SAS itself, the product itself, is a unique product. What happens is that uh, we try to take the product in the customer's view, uh, in the customer's perspective. What we do is we call in the customers. We listen to the customers, first of all. We call in the customers to, uh, to test our software, which or whatever new software the product is coming in. We tell them to come and test the software at that point. At the same time, we take feedback from them, asking them uh, what's going on. Uh, do you like the software? We ask them very, uh, various questions, uh, stating whether the product fits into their needs or not. In the end, what's the point of developing a software that they don't need? It's just a waste of money. At this point of time, um, I'd like, uh, it's better that my company is developing a product that could fit into half a dozen companies of what, what are existing, so I could get a strategic partnership with all my companies. At the end of the day, if my employees are happy, my customers will be happy. And if my customers are happy, that will make me happy. So this makes me unique from the other companies which are playing in role right now. That clearly gives us an edge over the other, in the, uh, other players in the market. We're now, going to talk, we're now going to be talking about how the employees in the company feel and fare, how happy and how excited they are to be working for SAS Institute. I joined SAS a few months back. The thing that was in my mind was having a challenging work. And when I came to uh, SAS to actually work, the focus was more on customer needs and which leads to innovation and whenever you're working on an, a project which requires innovation there's always a challenge having said that about work what other th uh, things that uh, actually uh, motivate me to work more are the ex uh, the facilities that are available at sas so, uh, like the gymnasium the heated swimming pool and everything it's like what drives me it's what keeps me uh, going on every day Hi, this is David Russell, Vice President of Human Resource, SAS. At SAS, we believe in a trickle-down policy, that is offering extraordinary perks to our employees and keeping our turnover low. We believe in the philosophy that if you treat people well, things will take care of themselves. Work culture at SAS is awesome. We get free massage, daycare, healthcare. We have medication centers, recreation rooms. Every weekend we go for a picnic, we can take our families too. 